A deer management program's success can be measured by many factors, but one of the most important is whether the deer herd is in balance with what the land can support. Balancing the deer herd with the habitat requires harvesting the appropriate number of antlerless deer. This may be a lot in some areas, a few in others, and even no antlerless deer in isolated cases. Being able to separate them in the field allows you to selectively harvest antlerless deer based on whether your goal is to harvest more mature does and reduce the deer herd, or harvest younger does or fawns and allow the deer herd to grow. This is especially pertinent when you have a group of deer in front of you during deer season. Shooting antlerless deer is a necessity, and it is a great opportunity for hunters to help produce healthy deer herds, ensure healthy wildlife habitat, and fill your freezer with high quality, locally sourced protein. Now, with regard to harvesting antlerless deer, some hunters get concerned about accidentally shooting a fawn. Now, I'm not talking about a young spotted fawn. I'm referring to a deer that's less than one year old during the fall hunting season. Now, make no mistake, there is nothing wrong with harvesting a fawn but I'll share some tips to help you separate adult does from fawns in the field and even identify whether those fawns are does or bucks. Estimating the sex and age of live antlerless deer is a great skill for hunters and critical for the collection of reliable observation data. The ability to separate live antlerless deer into two general age groups, fawns and adults, is obtainable for all hunters with a little knowledge and some practice. The three key characteristics are body size and shape, head size and shape, and animal behavior. So let's start with body size and shape. Adult does have long rectangular bodies. They have long necks, elongated noses, and defined musculature. They also may have a sagging belly, swayed back, and light to moderately stained tarsal glands. Fawns have short square bodies. They have short necks, compact faces, and less muscle definition. They also have flatter bellies, flatter backs, and light or no tarsal stain. Next up is head size and shape. Head size is a great indicator for distinguishing between adults and fawns. Adults have longer noses and foreheads. Even adults with shorter heads are considerably longer than fawns. And when viewing a fawn's head from the side, their eye is roughly halfway between the top of its forehead and the tip of its nose. In adults, the eye does not appear to be halfway. It's much closer to the forehead. Adults' ears are also proportional to their head, while fawns' ears appear large in comparison to the rest of their head. Head shape is one of the most useful indicators for identifying buck fawns in the field. Does, both fawns and adults, have more rounded heads, while buck fawns have flatter heads. You may also be able to see a buck fawns develop in antlers, and depending on birth date and growth rate, some buck fawns can even have bone visible above the skin. So these differences in head shape are very apparent when deer are in summer coat, and they become a little less apparent in heavier winter coats. This is another advantage of harvesting antlerless deer early in the season. Next up is animal behavior. Deer behavior provides many clues to an animal's sex and age. Fawns are often playful, naive, and inquisitive. Adults may be curious or inquisitive, but are rarely naive. Buck fawns are often more outgoing and aggressive than doe fawns, and this explains why a buck fawn is often the first animal to enter a field or a food plot. Adults are more wary and reserved, especially when leaving cover and entering a field or food plot. Adults may display aggression towards subordinate adults or fawns by drooping their ears or standing on their hind legs and flailing with their front legs. The mature does in a group usually will be the most cautious deer, so monitoring their surroundings by looking, rotating their ears to gather sound, and checking the wind. Adults are also typically the lead deer when a group of antlerless deer are traveling. With a little knowledge and some practice, you can become very proficient at estimating the sex and age of antlerless deer in the field. Some final harvest tips include, one, be careful harvesting a loaned antlerless deer as it's advisable to wait for at least two deer to be present to allow for a size comparison. This is especially important in low light situations as deer can appear much larger at dawn and dusk when our vision is less acute. Number two, be aware of the potential for short antlered spikes. These are one and a half year old bucks with tiny antlers. Their bodies resemble adult does, but they are bucks. In most states, they're legal to harvest with your antlerless deer tag, but your goal should be to use that tag on an antlerless deer. Three, 
fulfill your antlerless harvest goals as early in the hunting season as possible. In most areas, the difference between fawns and adult does is greatest early in the fall, making it easier to select for an adult doe. And finally, number four, always use a good pair of binoculars when estimating the sex and age of antlerless deer. Good optics can really help, and this is especially true at long distances and in low light situations. Okay, now that you know the different characteristics that we're looking at to separate does from fawns in the field, let's go ahead and look at some videos. Okay, for this first hunting scene, it's always important to understand time of year where you are. This is October in Pennsylvania, so pretty early season, so we should see a big difference between does and fawns of the year, and this is exactly what we're seeing here. It's nice to see two deer because then you get a good comparison for size. A single deer can fool you at be looking much larger than they really are. So the deer on the right, far smaller than the other, and look, its body is square, as opposed to the deer on the left whose body is rectangular. So we're looking at a fawn on the right, next to probably its mother, or at least an adult doe on the left. Now, if we didn't have two deer here, we can take a look at length of that head and see on that fawn how short that nose is. On the doe, her nose is much longer, and that eye is much closer to the forehead as it is to the end of the nose, so we can look at overall head length, we can look at body size, and it's perfect having the two of them side by side to clearly see one is much larger than the other, Definitely looking at a fawn and an adult doe. All right, let's take a look at the next clip. Here we have another hunting scenario, three deer. The one all the way to the right is clearly larger than the one that's closest to us, an adult doe. Oh, as this beds down, we get to see a little deer behavior as well with this. So we can't exactly see the body characteristics of the one that's laying down now. Here's where good optics really come in because by zooming in on this deer, look what's on his head. He has those little bumps. This is a buck fawn. Even though we couldn't see the body to identify it, being able to see the head clearly shows this is a fawn and specifically a buck fawn. Last deer in the frame here that we get to see is the deer behind it. You can see the antlers on this one. So this clearly is a buck that's at least one and a half years old. So in this one clip, we have an adult doe, a buck fawn, and even an adult buck all together to give you a little bit of comparison between some different body sizes and even sexes and age classes. All right, this next clip, still early season, but maybe just a little more difficult to identify exactly what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have two deer in the distance. Oh, this is very helpful. We not only have some body characteristics to look at, we also can see behavior. Now, what we just saw here is one deer showing dominance over the other. Fawns do this, adults do this. So by looking at what we have body-wise, these deer are about the same size, but take a look how short their legs are and how small the bodies are. We're looking at two fawns. And with this fawn picking its head up, we clearly can see that short nose, big ears on top. So two fawns here. The fact that we saw the one strike the other with its front leg is showing a little bit of dominance. It might be a buck fawn and the other is a doe fawn, or it might be two of the same sex with one that's a little more dominant. We can't tell exactly the sexes of them yet, but there's no doubt they're both fawns and there's no doubt the one on the right feels a little more dominant over the other one. All right, let's take a look at it a little bit later in the season. Let's go ahead and play the next clip. Now we're into late October, which means that those fawns have had about a month more to grow from what we have seen already. So keep timing of year in reference because that will help you gauge how big they should be relative to those does. This is a beautiful scene here with the doe on the right, look at long body, it's rectangular, a long nose, clearly a doe. The one in back, same thing. We see very similar body characteristics. She's actually a little bit taller than the one in front, so another adult doe. But what about the third deer? Pretty good sized animal, but you know what? Not as big as either the other two. And take a look at that square body and kind of short legs. Much larger than the fawns we have seen up to this point, because again, it's getting older. 
And if that was the only deer in the field, it would be much more difficult to judge, is it an adult or is it a fawn? But having these other deer here with it for size comparison makes this super easy. So use those body characteristics, use time of the year, and at any point possible, try to have multiple deer to compare relative size between them all. All right, let's go back to that same scene we were just looking at and see if we can further identify that fawn to tell whether it's a buck fawn or a doe fawn. This is great for this deer in the left for that adult doe. Look how long the distance is from her eye to her nose, much longer than her eye to her forehead, clearly an adult. Now take a look at that fawn in the middle. She looks right at us, and I say she because this is a doe fawn. Look how rounded her head is between the ears. Every doe fawn has a rounded head. Every buck fawn, it's flat between the ears. Many times we can see its bumps or its pedestals where its antlers are gonna be growing in the future, but if not, it's at least flat. But this clearly here, rounded between the ears, so we're looking at two adult does accompanied by a doe fawn. All right, let's progress in the season a little farther, and instead of a food plot, let's go ahead and take a look at a deer in a wooded situation. Now, up to this point, we've shown you multiple deer. This is a single deer walking through here, so we don't have size comparison between one or another. However, let's take a look at the body characteristics that we have. We have legs that are about proportional for the body, we have a body that's rectangular, not square, more rectangular, but take a look at the head. Long nose, the eye is definitely closer to the forehead, which means the length between the eye and the nose is much longer. So rectangular body, long nose, we are clearly looking at an adult doe. All right, let's take a look at another wooded hunting scenario. Now, we can't see these deer immediately. We can see a deer here coming through. Oh, there's another deer behind it. All right, we have two deer. First thing, let's identify, are they bucks or are they does? So we do this by, are they, can we see antlers? Hopefully you have a good pair of optics here. So we're trying to study and find and work our way through these branches. This is very real life. You don't always see the entire animal in the open immediately. So we're watching for pieces, seeing whatever we can. We still can't clearly look. It seems like that first deer does not have antlers. I couldn't see any on the second one yet, but we don't really know, and that's okay. Keep watching, keep observing, wait for them to be able to get into a scenario, but understand that there's a lot of times that you can't see the whole animal. Just be ready when they present themselves. Now, the lead deer comes out, okay, no antlers here at all, so let's figure out if this is a doe or a fawn. Well, taking a look at the body, overall size, rectangular body, long nose, Definitely an adult doe. All right, that one's done. Let's look at what's behind her. No antlers here either, and a little smaller deer, but you know, this deer's not that much smaller at all. Let's take a look though. It looks more of a square body here. Definitely a shorter head. We have a fawn. But remember time of year, this fawn is almost as large as that doe. So if it was by itself, it would be very tricky to identify one or the other. However, looking specifically at the body characteristics, Definitely with a shorter head and that square body in the middle lets us know that it might be a big fawn, but it's still a fawn. All right, we have two more scenes from you. Let's go late season. Let's get some snow on the ground and take a look at some deer coming out of the timber. All right, we have a single deer coming right at us. Can't see overall body size yet but it looks pretty large. We're not seeing any antlers, so we know we have a, have a, a female deer. Let's take a look. Oh, she steps up perfectly. Take a look at how long this body is. This is a big animal. This is a really nice doe. Long body, clearly see that that's not a fawn, but take a look at her head as well. If we couldn't see the body, could just see the head. Has that long nose, clearly not that little short stubby thing that we see on fawns and take a look at her ears. They look normal size for her body. They're not large like a fawns would have been. This deer provides us the perfect package, profile picture, big body, big head, but we could have used just the head, just the body or any parts of this if we didn't see it all to identify what she was. Fortunately, she gave us a great look. This is a beautiful example of a mature doe. All right, we're at the end of the year here. Let's look at the final clip.
All right, we have a single deer, gives us a great look head on. There's no antlers, so we're looking at a doe, and look how rounded that head is between the ears. That would make this a doe fawn. Now, pay attention with this too, the body, definitely square, short legs, no doubt that it's a doe. This same doe fawn would have been much easier to tell that it was a doe fawn as compared to a buck fawn earlier in the year because they are still in that summer coat or their early winter coat. This one clearly has a thicker coat on it now. It's cold out, you can see the snow, which makes it a little more difficult to tell. Is that head round or flat? That's another great reason if you're harvesting antlerless deer to do it earlier in the year if you want to choose to protect buck fawns. But in this case, this is a great shot of this. We definitely have a fawn that's out feeding and given that rounded head, 100% sure this is a doe fawn. Identifying antlerless deer in the field is a lot of fun, whether you hunt them with a bow, a rifle, or a camera. And this information can make you a more knowledgeable whitetail enthusiast. If you'd like additional resources on this topic, or you'd like to help ensure the future of wild deer, wildlife habitat, and hunting, join the National Deer Association today at DeerAssociation.com.